My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Especially if the chocolates in question are from Bloomex, in which case you might get water crackers. Hey gang, um, apologies in advance for all the jump cuts, but it is February 12th right now and I need to bang this vlog out before Valentine's Day. And I'm not working off script, so that's my explanation there. Anyways, in the weeks surrounding Christmas, I found myself to be somewhat underemployed, and so I started scanning Kijiji ads for places looking for people to pick up temp shifts, because I just needed to make a little extra Christmas scratch, you know how it goes. Um, I came across an ad from a company looking for people to put together gift baskets and floral arrangements during the busy Christmas season, no experience necessary, so I responded to that. I got an email back almost right away instructing me with the hours and the location and the name of the operation, Bloomex. So I go to their warehouse and there were maybe seven other temps there who had all, like myself, been recently bitten by this less than stellar economy of ours. There were some ladies who had been laid off and there were some oil field guys, that kind of thing. Anyway, there were also two full-time ladies on. One of them was really nice and helpful, but she had recently had a gallbladder surgery and she was just doubled over in pain the whole time. Like, I don't even think she should have been working. So she mostly did the computer work. Um, the other lady who was there, who was on the floor with us, was a complete bitch. She also mentioned what an easygoing person she was so many times that I think she actually believed it. Like, I get that it was the Christmas season and anybody in the floral industry had to have just been a complete basket case. Like, I saw those orders stacked up, but this one seemed to kind of pacify herself by picking a scapegoat in the group and just locking in on them whenever anything she didn't like happened. Um, she immediately went for these two native ladies, and I know racism's a pretty serious charge, and I don't want to call anybody out on it without being a hundred percent sure, but, eh, you know, these ladies hadn't done or not done anything that any of the others of us had or hadn't done. And she was just so mean to them. By lunchtime, she had sent them home for the day with an implicit don't call us, we won't call you either, and uh, we never saw them again. I became her new punching bag after I cut a floral arrangement too short. Now in my defense, I'm not a professional florist, nor do I lay any claims to being one. I didn't really know what I was doing, and she sure as hell wasn't providing any guidance, but at the end of the day, it is the employer who needs to be satisfied with the output, and I can fully respect that. I don't want to be putting out shoddy arrangements either. I want people to be happy with these gifts they're receiving. So I offered to buy it off her, like it was just a little $20 arrangement, but by this point, the damage had pretty much been done. This was near the end of the day, and we all went home soon after. I tried to apologize to her again, and she once again assured me that she was a very easygoing person, and it took more than that to bother her. But the next day, I could not ask her a single question without a sigh or an eye roll or a under-the-breath comment about my intelligence, and I got put on menial tasks like box folding. When I ran out of boxes to fold, I guess she decided that I could probably assemble gift baskets with the oil field guys without doing too much damage. Now this is where I got my first little glimmer of what this company is really all about. See, in the gift basket arrangement area, there were several order cards for the baskets we were supposed to be making, and the order cards had displayed on them the items that were to go into various and sundry different baskets as advertised on the website. I'm just going to pop up a screen cap now so you can kind of get a feel for what they offer gift basket wise. Here's a few of them anyway.
What you need to know is that the website offers oodles of different gift basket options, and I didn't know that at the time. But I'm looking over these order cards, and at the bottom of each is written like a piece count, like 12 item gourmet basket or 15 item gourmet basket. Um, regardless of what the actual basket was supposed to be. So I asked the boys what the piece counts were all about, and they told me, well, that's just how many of these items we're supposed to put into each basket. And then they indicated a table full of water crackers and off-brand chocolates and teas and things like that. I asked them then what the original order printout meant then. I remember very specifically I was looking at a 15-piece basket, um, a lint chocolate basket, uh, with a box of chocolates and four of those sleeves of the little truffle balls and some hot chocolate and some shortbreads and things. Um, and the boys said that that didn't matter and they had just been told to substitute 15 gourmet items, which were, like I said, water crackers and things like that. Now, I don't even like lint chocolate, per se, but a lot of people really do, and if that's what you ordered, then water crackers aren't going to cut it, you know? Here's a picture of the basket in question that I dug up from their website. Like, it's a $110 basket. I know it says it's on half price, but I don't believe they ever actually sold it for $220. I think they just say it's half price to rope you into buying it. But still, if this is what you were expecting and what you got was what essentially is $15 store items, I think you'd be ticked. Before the boys could even answer me, Miss Easygoing comes along and tells me to stop standing around doing nothing. She then puts me on a new task, which was potting live arrangements. So I spent the rest of my day just shoving little tropical plants and poinsettias that were half dead and literally from Walmart into these baskets with, with no additional potting soil or anything. You just kind of had to manipulate the root ball enough that these poor little plants could stand up. And I know there was supposed to be decorative pine cones and bows and things, but all I had to work with were these juniper branches. I, I have no idea what a repotted Walmart plant goes for on their website. I dare not even look. At around 6 o'clock, and I should mention that we started at 10, the nicer of the two full-time ladies had ordered pizza for the temps, and I had run out of um, live arrangements to do, and Miss Easygoing told me that I should just go home, so I did. She also told me not to come in at 10 the next day, and she'd call me if she needed me, which, of course, was once again the old don't call us, we won't call you either treatment. It was a couple days later I received an email from Bluemax owner Dmitri Lakanya asking me to confirm my hours. So I told him I worked seven the first day and eight the second. He wrote me back to tell me that Daniela, who was, who was the nicer of the two full-timers, had um, reported that I had worked seven the first day and four the second day. I wrote him back to tell him that that was absolutely not the case and that nobody had really been keeping track of hours and that Daniela was in so much pain she couldn't really even be expected to. Um, and then I detailed some events for him to confirm, including the pizza which came eight hours after the beginning of the shift, and he could have asked anyone there. Of course, he wrote me back to say, no, four hours is what was reported to me, so that's what I'm using. Of course, I was livid that he would do that to someone who's out of work at Christmas, but what can you do? It's his word against yours. I pretty much figured that that would be the end of my relationship with this company, but I don't know, I guess I was bored one day and just innocently even just decided I'd look them up on Facebook and I came up with this 
telling little drop-down menu. Bluemex sucks before Bluemex Canada, Bluemex Australia, Bluemex, Bluemex Australia sucks, Bluemex The Truth, Bluemex UK, and Bluemex Australia ruined our day. So I joined Bluemex sucks. Yes, you do. The very first post I see is from a woman who had ordered this for her daughter. Her daughter had received this. Now, I may have actually had a hand in making that, and if I did, to both the sender and recipient, I am so sorry. But none of that pine or berries or ivy was even available for us to work with. So, hey, what's the logic here, Dimitri? Is it that since the mother's in Ontario and the daughter's in Alberta, the daughter's just going to ring up her mom and say, thanks for the floral arrangement, and they're never going to compare notes? Because most of the time, that probably works. That is very devious. And here's another one from Blue Max Sucks. But I know I didn't make this one because I took the Walmart plants out of their pots before putting them in the basket. And these horror stories just keep coming, too. Like, people who receive things that are nothing like what they ordered, or people who receive things that are dead, or people who send flowers to relatives in the hospital only for them to show up days after the relative has left the hospital despite promising overnight delivery. Here's one of my favorites from the Facebook page. Sorry about the low res. That's um, expectations up top and reality down low. What even is that stuff? There's some gherkins and some spaghetti sauce and some weird foreign snacks. Like, did they raid a food bank? And then when this person writes Dimitri in disgust, he writes back saying something to the tune of, you ordered 15 gourmet items, and that's exactly what I see, so it looks like you got what you ordered. But the worst stories to me are one where a person ordered a funeral wreath, and then bouquets were delivered to the funeral because they apparently don't do wreaths, but failed to mention that when the person placed their order. And then another one where a person ordered a funeral arrangement that just didn't show up on time. So, as is my way, I then become obsessed with this company and just start picking at it like a wound that won't heal. And I go to Yelp, where actually the reviews are overwhelmingly positive. But I do notice that most of the positive reviews are attached to accounts that were made to write that review specifically. And I also noticed a couple had the same last names as some of the employees that work there. Then a couple weeks later, I find out that Daniela, you'll remember her as nice full-timer, had actually quit Bluemex when Dimitri accused her of forging doctor's notes about her gallbladder surgery. Uh-uh. I, I met her soon after her gallbladder surgery. It was pretty legit. But I digress. She and I kind of pulled an all-nighter talking about Bluemex, and she mentioned with absolutely no coaxing whatsoever from me that staff members were required to write positive reviews on review sites. I mean, I already knew, but she just confirmed all my suspicions. In the interest of whatever fairness I owe this company, here's what Dimitri told the Toronto Star about bad reviews. We compete against all local overpriced flower shops, and sometimes owners of these shops put their comments online pretending to be an unhappy customer. Yeah, it's a bitch when people pretend to be customers, isn't it? And besides confirming what I already pretty much suspected to be true about your bad reviews and your unscrupulous sale policies and your customer service reps being instructed to hang up on difficult customers, Daniela also mentioned this. 
you guys, or at least your Winnipeg location, sells caskets now. Well, there's an item you wouldn't want delivered late. And I am just scratching the surface here, folks, but this video's already getting too long. Listen, Dimitri, you shouldn't rip me off. Like, in the beginning, what were we fighting about here? 50 bucks? All I have to do is cause you to not sell one of your lint chocolate baskets, and trust me, that'll be easy. And I will have already cost you more than what you owed me. But, you know, that's not even what matters to me anymore. I have just gone so far down this rabbit hole now, what kind of person would I be if I just sat back and continued to let you take people's money and ruin their Christmases and their Valentine's Days and their hospital stays and, God, their funerals? And who would I be if I let you continue to prey on the destitute and the unemployed to do your dirty work around the holidays? And what kind of jerk would I have to be to let you continue to take business away from local florists who actually care about their craft and put out a decent product? Like, I'd have to have no conscience at all. I don't even know what that would feel like. Maybe you could tell me.